uh, is something that every human being and individual is facing uh, every day. I mean, the tougher negotiations for no, negotiators for me are my my two daughters, uh, who are uh, always getting at the end what they uh, most of what they want. So, um, uh, so yeah, it, it's it's um, it's it's a muscle that we sharpen and we develop every day. From day one, uh, the ICRC uh, has had to constantly work on its uh, negotiation. Uh, skills, uh, which are, by the way, uh, to me, indispensable if you really want to influence uh, those uh, who take decisions that have impact, uh, be them negative or positive on the lives uh, of those living in conflict situation or experiencing violence. Twenty-one years ago, when I uh, just arrived in Iraq as a water engineer, uh, that was my second week in the context, and we had this terrible accident uh, uh, in a wastewater uh, treatment plant. A welder uh, sparked a fire that ended up killing two daily workers, and uh, one other daily worker was uh, um, uh, inhaled toxic uh, gases, and uh, his days were really in danger. We learned that the only way to um, to uh, to give him a chance to survive uh, was to uh, to send him to one particular hospital. Uh, and uh, further to a quick investigation, we learned that the only person that could make this happen was the the health minister. The minister was very cold in the beginning of the conversation, and then when he detected my Lebanese accent. Uh, uh, he smoothened a bit and he he listened. I knew he was a doctor, so I um, uh, I explained to him what I understood from the condition of uh, the daily worker, and I felt that uh, he kind of uh, emotionally connected. The, the minister ended up uh, ended up uh, giving his green light to uh, to send uh, our daily worker to the hospital. <laughs> Respecting your interlocutor is absolutely critical. Showing respect, understanding the culture and uh, expressing this explicitly, but also the ability to listen, uh, the emotional intelligence. You need to detect the body language of your interlocutor. Um, but then uh, important ingredients are also perseverance and patience. Uh, and before any negotiation, uh, process uh, can begin, it is also important to understand uh, the, the wider context, understand the history, um, so we understand also uh, where the particular grievances are, are coming from and, uh, and understand who we are negotiating with. A good indicator for a good negotiation to me is when uh, you know, my solution or our solution as ICRC ends up being uh, uh, the solution of the interlocutor or the idea of the interlocutor. In a successful negotiation, uh, it's not uh, something along the line, I win, you lose and we move forward. It, it, it has to be a win-win if you want uh, the outcome to be a sustainable one. And, uh, and a great negotiation is, is also collaboration. The sector will, will, uh, will likely be much more diverse uh, than, uh, than it is today. Uh, and uh, more importantly, it will be more networked. Local, national organization who have, uh, by the way, been long playing a critical role uh, in, in the humanitarian field, uh, but only recently being recognized, will continue to fulfill, in my view, a hugely important uh, function. Um, uh, the same for affected communities, uh, who already are uh, in so many contexts, we see them being the first responders. More connection with the stakeholders with whom the humanitarian sector has not traditionally interacted with, such as, for instance, the tech companies, uh, when we see uh, all the challenges in the field of uh, uh, data, uh, digital uh, challenges, the digital divide, I think the tech sector will need to 
genuinely be part also or or play its its part its role in in in, in the humanitarian response the cchn is a good um, uh, blueprint and model of how we can bring expertise horizontally in a network way uh, to to upgrade the collective practice in in uh, humanitarian negotiation